Uh, we're ministering on the revelatory ministry of Christ's miracles. Mm -hmm. And it's a little a different type of preaching than normally we do. But my aim here is to familiarize you with the person of Christ as, as he unveils it in his ministries. Because in Christ's miracles, you're seeing Christ. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're seeing the real Jesus. Uh, this is not an act. This is not something he did just out of sympathy, although, although there was this aspect of it. Jesus had compassion and sympathy mm -hmm. upon suffering people. This is, but this is his nature. This is how he is. Yeah. And when the Father sent him into the world, this is one of the ways Jesus prepared for his death, was working his miracles. Mm -hmm. The ultimate uh, act of consideration was the death of Christ. Yeah. That was the ultimate... Yeah compassionate act. Yes, right. But all of these miracles lead up to it. It showed you that this is very real. Our, our blessed Lord's attitude toward people. Now the miracles are associated with God God receiving glory. You'll remember that uh, when Jesus uh, turned the water into wine, that incident is called the beginning, this beginning of miracles. That was his first first miracle, but the scriptures say that this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's the thing I want you to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He showed something about himself that the people had never seen before. Yeah. Mary and Joseph had never seen this right. before. Uh, when he went into the temple at 12 years of age, they didn't, they didn't see this what was made known. In his, see, in his miracles, he's telling us, us something about himself that you just you can't see it anywhere else. It's seen in these miracles. This beginning. And it was just the beginning. <laughs> All the miracles aren't recorded in Scripture. and There's a lot of them. I think we're covering about 42 of them. Mm -hmm. But they, 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 these were just a sampling. It appears as though most every day was filled with this kind of thing with the Lord Jesus. And of course it didn't end there. He's continuing after he went home. It all didn't stop when he went back home. It kind of says it started. And so we, it's very, very heavy on my heart that when we look at these things that you come to see, associate this Jesus with yourself. Yes, amen. And with your condition. Mm -hmm. We are, we're people, all everybody, we're people. I'm a person just like you. You're a person just like me. But we all need this Christ that's being made known. Yes, amen. In these miracles. This particular one is found in John the ninth chapter. It's, it's a long passage of scripture, so I'm just I'm going to refer to it as we go along. The other gospel writers don't contain this. It's the healing of a man born blind. There never anything like this happened before this. In 4,000 years of human history, nobody born blind, so far as we know, was ever healed. And right, right off the bat, you've got to pick up on this, that Jesus specializes in things that are like impossible. See, when you look at your situation, if it looks like it's impossible, fess up that it is. Yes, amen. Just admit it is. And stop trying to find a solution and answers every place else. Just say, this is impossible with men. This is impossible because nothing's impossible with Christ. Yes, amen. Nothing at all. Now looking at this incident, a very interesting thing is noted right off the bat in John 9.1. It says that as Jesus passed by, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from birth. Now, there are cases where Jesus healed blind people. They came to him. Bartimaeus, you know, he came to Christ calling out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Father was a see, was one of these two men that one gospel writer refers to two men that followed after Jesus and, and said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. And kept on calling out. Another time they brought, they brought a man to him that was blind. He touched him and healed him. Then there was a, they brought another man to him in Bethsaida, and he had to get him out of town before he could do anything. It was such, such it was a citadel of unbelief. And, uh, but this case here, this man didn't seek Jesus. Yeah. He didn't come to Jesus. Jesus came to him. Mm -hmm. Now you see a little thing about Jesus here. You may feel uh, sometimes as though you can't quite make it to Christ, you want to be more aware of them, but you feel like you can't access them. And 
Well, Jesus, he finds people mm -hmm. that aren't looking for him. Amen. This is one of his natures. And as he came by, see, Jesus doesn't miss anything. You may, <laughs> we may miss things. See, we, there may be things that are in you that no one knows tonight. We look at you, we can't see. Some people may have saw this man unfamiliar with him and may not have known he was <coughs> blind from birth. Maybe they thought he had an accident this happened or something, see? But Jesus, he doesn't really miss anything. If you can never get Jesus in the house, mm -hmm. he won't miss anything. Yeah. Uh -huh. So he saw him was born blind. And of course, this raised the question. The disciples saw this too. And the disciples asked him, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents? That he was born blind. Well, now, they weren't fools asking this. Mm -hmm. Jesus is going to tell them that they, neither one of these were true, but he didn't mean this never happened like this. But it's good to know that uh, when you are diagnosed something, you may not have all the facts out before you. <laughs> you may not have them all. So then there's two possibilities. This man sinned, which means that this was in the area of foreknowledge then. Yeah. See? That God <coughs> saw he was going to sin, so he was born blind. That's one part. Jesus didn't say, oh, that never happens. Jesus didn't say that. No. Or that his parents sinned, so this would be uh, the fathers ate sour grapes and the children's teeth were set on edge. And that, that's been known to happen too. God visited iniquity to the third and fourth generation. See, that, that happens. But so then these were the two. Well, either they, this wasn't that kind of case. <laughs> it, everything's not in the same area. Now let me... Uh, <coughs> Let me make a couple observations about this. It, it, it's, it, it's improper to think causes for sickness are easily discerned. Yeah. Now the doctor, they'll give you some causes. They'll give you some causes why this happens. The health specialist, he'll, he, he'll spell out. Yeah. He'll tell, I went through this, so I have no one to talk about here. And the, the foot specialist, he'll, he'll tell you, he'll trace it back to the foot. And the chiropractor, uh, he'll trace it back to the spinal column. They've all got the goal. They've gone. The dietitian is it's a diet. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it causes. And the, the ecologist says it's in the air. That's where it is. It's in the air. See, these men have got all our answers. But you'll, you'll find out they're not too satisfied when you've got a problem. Uh -huh. When you really got a situation, these guys can't deliver the goods. That's right. So Jesus has got to deliver it. For instance, there are some people that were sick because it was a judgment from God. For instance, Miriam. Her and Aaron got upset with Moses because he married a black woman. <coughs> Don't tell her what would have happened to him today. And uh, so God just gave Miriam a good dose of leprosy just to let her know that Moses was his man, that they dared to speak against him. And of course, Moses prayed for her and she was, she was healed. And uh, there was Gehazi, the servant of Elisha. You remember Naaman came and he was healed of leprosy, so he wanted to kind of give a gift to Elisha. He has several uh, new sets of clothes from the local, local high-priced clothing store. And he gave them, and uh, Elisha didn't want it, and Gehazi thought, well, I could use some new clothes. So he got some new clothes, but they had to cover up leprosy all his life. He was judged, him and his children, just lepers forever. So that was a sickness, as a little judgment. Some, uh, some sickness is so you get more grace. Some, to get more grace, sometimes the flesh has to be like pummeled down. And Paul says, so I glory in my infirmities when I'm weak and I'm strong. So some, some's in that category. And here's a case that it's, uh, some sickness is for God's glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's like the reason for it. When Lazarus grew sick and finally died, Jesus said, This sickness is not unto death, but it's for the glory of God. That's John 11, 4. So that's, that's some sickness is for that, mm -hmm. for that reason. And sometimes just to confirm how dull people are that see it, like Lazarus, the beggar full of sores, sat at the rich man's doorstep, Every single day, and it kind of proved what a what a hard man that rich man was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different reasons for for sickness. 
But in this case here, Jesus is going to say why this man was born blind. He spells it out. Here's, here's, and then here's what he said that neither had this man sinned. It didn't mean he was morally perfect. That's not what he meant. This blindness isn't traced back to his sin, nor yet his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. God like planted this guy here. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, some people don't think God would do something like this. Put someone sick there so you get glory. Well, this is, this is what Jesus said it was. And uh -huh. Jesus picked up on it right away. He knew what the Father was doing. And he said, I must work the works of him that sent me. Uh -huh. So I've got, see, that's why he saw this man. Oh, Father put this man here. Uh -huh. Blind from birth. And he wasn't a child. He was a fully matured man. Remember, it said he's he's of age. His parents said he's of age. He's a fully grown man, fully responsible. He'd been blind all this time. All this time he'd been blind. It wasn't God didn't make him blind today, and then Jesus healed him tomorrow. It wasn't people might think, well, why would God, why would God let a man be blind for the, all this time? And, waiting on the Savior coming on way up the road. There. Why would he do something like that? Well, it's, he's God. He's, yeah. he's serving purposes that are more lofty than ours. See, his kingdom doesn't center around a blind man. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're waiting for mercy, you gotta, you got to gotta endure some things. Huh? This is the way it is. You just learn this about God and learn about Christ. As you may be important, but they're more important. Amen. Sometimes they have to let a situation get really bad before people know it's really him that worked. Uh -huh. In some situations, I actually think sometimes they seek answers prematurely. It's uh, not out of any malice or on our part or anything like that, but sometimes you do have to, you, you'll kind of learn this as you live by faith. You'll learn the situations you learn to live with until, whether it's some mercy given to you or the Lord comes and just... Some situations like that. We're going to find later this man was a beggar. He was so he begged. Uh -huh. He begged for sustenance for all this time. And Jesus said, "I've got to work now. The works I can't wait. We can't. Uh, I'm going to stop right here and do a work because the night comes and no man can work. There's going to be some time. This blind man's not going to be here. He's on his way to Jerusalem at this time. Jesus is to prepare to die. This is at the tail end of his ministry." He doesn't have time to dawdle along here. He, his face is stead, set steadfastly to go to Jerusalem. But here's this, here's this person mm -hmm. put here by God. He says, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Mm -hmm. What he said to his disciples. What did he mean? You're going to see something about me here mm -hmm. in this case. Now let's observe this, uh, this miracle. It was unprovoked. The blind man didn't say, give me my sight. He didn't say, give me mercy. This wasn't that kind of miracle. In fact, sometimes people will receive from God without asking. Mm -hmm. I know James said, you receive not because you ask not, but that's not, this isn't true in every case. So for instance, the scriptures do speak about this. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 65, 1 says, I'm sought of them that ask not for me. I'm found of them that sought me not. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be surprised if we gave testimonies around here. Some people would have to say, I was found, I wasn't seeking, and he found me. Yeah. Uh -huh. I saw something, all of a sudden I woke up to my dilemma. Mm -hmm. Christ found me. I wasn't engaged in Bible study. Huh? Right. I wasn't going to church. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to find God. Just all of a sudden, he found me. There I was. See, that's yeah. what Scripture says this happens. Yeah. Romans 10, 20, he said, he's, Isaiah is very bold, very bold. And says, I was found of them, of them that sought me not. I was manifested unto them that asked not after me. Mm -hmm. See, this is God. There are situations like this. Mm -hmm. So actually, salvation, you've got a lot of, uh, lot of opportunities. Uh -huh. yeah. You've got, you may be seeking. There may be someone coming to you to bring the word sent by Christ. You may be completely ignorant of the fact that He's going to find you. So there's actually, if a person's lost, it's like hard to, in a sense, it's kind of hard to be lost. If you can see it right. 
Now this is the directive for the man. He, he doesn't introduce himself. Doesn't say who he is. He just says, now here, he, while he's talking to his disciples, the scripture says while he's talking to his disciples, he made some, he spat on the ground. And see, there's people who could never imagine Jesus doing them. Spit on the ground, made some clay of it, and, and smeared it on the man's eyes. Didn't tell him what he's doing. What, like, what are you doing? But his disciples, by this time, they learned not to ask questions like this. And he says to the man, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He didn't tell him what was going to happen. He didn't say, you're going to see. This is it. This is the last day you're going to be blind. He just put some mud. Here's mud in your eye. Put mud in his eye. Told him to go wash. Man been sitting there all day. Would you have done this? He's going to tell you something about the man, too. He doesn't know who did this. But the scripture says that he went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes the answer is really kind of that simple. Yeah. You just do what Christ tells you to do, even if you don't know why he said it, or mm -hmm. you just you don't know what's going to happen when you, you just do it. Mm -hmm. and, pretty, and you come see it. And the blessing, he's showing you this aspects of Christ now. Christ doesn't always give you all the data before, he, before the blessing. He doesn't always spell it all out. This is what's going to happen. When you go wash, you're going to come away seeing. He didn't give them directions to the pool of Siloam. He didn't say, now as you all know, it's north. Find someone to lead you there. How's this guy find this pool? I, I don't know. He was blind. But he found a way. I'll tell you, if you're serious enough about doing what Jesus says, you'll find a way to get it done. Yes, you may have to find some water in the desert. Like the eunuch, but he was alert. He saw it. Some folk would have never seen that pool of water out there in the desert. And what a glorious response. Now, <clears throat> people saw this happen. Comes away seen. All, all he did, all he did, he did what someone he, who he didn't know, didn't know who he was, didn't know why he put clay on his eyes, he went and he came seen. And the scriptures say that this kind of set off a discussion among, among the people. The neighbors, therefore, the neighbors. You've got to pick up on this, the neighbors. The neighbors see more than they let you know. The neighbors, therefore, and they which had seen him that was born blind said, is not this he that sat and begged? Because see, when you can see, people know. Mm -hmm. People know when you can't see. People know when you can see. Uh -huh. So they could tell. See, there's some people, they actually spiritually are blind, and people that are informed know they are. Mm -hmm. And when their eyes are open, people informed know they've been open. So they know, is this, isn't this the fellow that was begging all the time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some said, this is he. This is him, we recognize him. Others said, oh, he's like him. He looks like him, but but it's, it's not really him. It's, and he said, I'm he. He got those three testimonies. Some people just cold and calculated testimony. Hey, this is him. They didn't really care about it. They probably didn't care when he begged. They probably didn't care when he saw. But this is it. We can tell. This is uh, this is brother so-and-so. We, we recognize some people said, no, no, there couldn't be this big a change. This big a change is impossible. Mm -hmm. See, it's not possible to have someone who's been blind, like all of a sudden seeing this. He, he, so he just looks like him. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And then, see, it's important that you know what's happening. He says, I'm, I'm he. Mm -hmm. I'm the one. May you be able to say that about the working of God in you. Yeah. I'm the one. See, there's uh, some people get the wrong conclusions about when, when the Lord works. For instance, um, one time Jesus said to the Father, Father, he said, Glorify thy name. The voice come out of heaven and said, I both glorify it and I glorify it again. Some people said, What well, thunder there? Thunder. Well, some people were a little bit higher up. They said, Well, it's an angel. That was an angel. It's not thunder. It was an angel. Jesus, he saw this voice, he, he knew who it was. It was like these three levels. Some people just kind of have a disinterested, yeah. this is he, or it thundered. Or, 
Then some people, they know something happened, they don't really know what. It, this is like him, or this is an angel. You see what I'm saying here? Some, some people know enough that they, they don't get any benefit from it, but they just kind of know something happened. But then there's that other level of knowledge, yeah. where I'm he, or this is the voice from heaven. There's these three different, uh, three different responses the Lord has. You remember Thomas one time? I'm going to show you now, but this is he. But it, it's not doesn't have the power in it. When Jesus rose from the dead, you remember, he, he appeared to his disciples, and he breathed on them, yeah. and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit, and that's the meeting that Thomas missed. Yeah. You never know what you're going to miss. Yeah, that's, right. that's the meeting Thomas missed, and there's no, there's no record that he ever caught up on this breathing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And finally, the next time, well, Thomas showed up the next time, and he had, after the disciples testified that Jesus was there among them, he said, I, if I don't put my hands in, a, in his hands and his side, I'm not going to believe. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus uh, presented him with the facts, challenged him to do it, and Thomas, see, he responded, he said, Oh, my Lord and my God, this is he. <laughs> and Jesus said, Well, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed, not blessed are you, Thomas. Ah, he didn't say that. Blessed are they that have not seen yet have believed. So it is possible to know who Jesus is, but you did like you don't get a blessing out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You really don't. That's what these people have said. This is He. Mm -hmm. He's uh, some people said He's like Him. They reject the evidence. They're like they're saying it like it thundered. Mm -hmm. They can't quite reconcile this situation of what they think is possible. What they See, they're thinking in their minds that this such a thing as this is really not possible, mm -hmm. to have one day blind, next day seeing clearly. Mm -hmm. They don't think this can happen. But believe me when I tell you, it can happen. Well, the people, they weren't content to just observe. They had to interrogate. They had to ask some questions. And so they said, uh, John 9, 10, 11, they, ever, they said unto him, how were thy eyes open? Mm -hmm. He answered and said, A man that's called Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received my sight. <laughs> so that's, that's all he knew. That was, that's the facts of the case. That's, at this point, that's all we know, too. Yeah. But it's blessed us, but it didn't bless them. Huh, how about that? Same facts. Yeah. Yeah. They said unto him, Well, where is he? Where is he? He said, I don't know. <laughs> it's possible to get a blessing from God like you don't know what happened. You can't really account for it. There's things like this. You've got to really see this. And if you, you can analyze your life, you'll pick up on this and there's some major change happened like, you. where is he? You say, I don't, I don't know where, where he is. Well, that wasn't, that wasn't sufficient. Still, they, they brought him to the Pharisees, the doctors of the law, that were able to diagnose things more perfectly than the neighbors. So they, there's the neighbors. They were going to move up now to the Pharisees, who are more learned in these things. They brought him to the Pharisees, who aforetime was blind. And then a little technicality, it was a Sabbath day when his eyes were open. So on the Sabbath day, you know, the Pharisees are specialists on the Sabbath day. So we'll go, we'll go and ask them about this. And the Pharisees say, they ask him, well, how did you, they ask him the same question, how did you receive your sight? Mm -hmm. He said unto them, he put clay on my eyes, and I washed and do see, and he repeats it. And the, the, so they, they have a caucus among themselves, and the Pharisees say, this man is not of God, uh -huh. because he healeth on the Sabbath day. <laughs> That's, that was their way, that their criteria. Yeah. He's not of God. Because he does something that we don't think is right. Mm -hmm. So we're, he's probably, he's not of God at all. And they didn't let the matter go there. Others that were standing by heard this dialogue going on. And they said, well, how can a man that's a sinner do such miracles? Mm -hmm. So this didn't make sense. How can something like this happen? By, how can a sinner have such power with God? Mm -hmm. Well, you kind of got to bring it up to... <laughs> Some, you got to bring it up to speed, like mm -hmm. someone from the Christian church might say, how could that 
be true. It was a Baptist that said it. Yeah. You've got to bring it up to the day and see what it's really like. Yeah. Well, you might have to come across someone that, that a Catholic said it, and that for sure tells you that it can't be. See, you've got to go by what happened. Yeah. I know some people that were changed, but it wasn't in our church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then someone else rescued him. Mm -hmm. But the change is real. God doesn't always work through our church, oh, yeah. so to speak. Mm -hmm. How did it happen? And it says there was a division among them. So there was a division among them. What was the division? It was about whether Jesus was from God or not. Yeah. But whether someone from God could really violate our traditions like this. It's such a blatant contradiction of what we believe. How could God send someone to do something that we haven't been doing? We, we are the true New Testament church. How can it be that God would work like It's a division among them over this. Well, it now it's time for the, for the men to speak up again. And in verse 17, and they say to the blind man again, What sayest thou of him? That he hath opened thine eyes. What do you have to say about it? You're faced with this man that can see. And it's like upsetting their, their theological cart. They can't handle this. Here's some, what, do you, what do you think about it? We say he's a sinner. What do you say? Well, he responds back, like he's a prophet. Well, we got a big contradiction here. Do you hear the religious authorities say he's a sinner? This man... How did, why did he say prophet? Huh. Jesus didn't prophesy anything to the blind man, did he? He didn't even tell him what was going to happen when he washed in the pool of, si pool of Siloam. He said, he's a prophet. That's what he is. And the Jews who didn't believe on him, they, they retaliated. <laughs> they say that uh, they said, we're going to have to call his parents. We're not, we're not content with this. So they, uh, they, call, they call his parents. See, they ask, when they ask this blind man, who do you think he is? They were get, asking him a reason for the hope that was in him. Yeah. Yeah. See? And uh, people, that, now here it tells you exactly what they ask, but some people are asking like this kind of question. When they're confronting you, and you've, you're exuding a life that they've never seen before, you've got some attitudes about this world and about the things of God that they've never seen before. And so they're going to ask you, what, who is he? Mm -hmm. How are you? And this is your chance. Yes. They're a witness. And you just got to tell the truth now. Mm -hmm. Just tell the truth. All, all he knew was, he put clam eyes, I wash, and I see. So he just told him the bare facts. Then he gave him his view of the matter. This has got to be a prophet. Mm -hmm. It's got to be. That is, this man that did this has to have something to say. Yeah. God doesn't do something without saying something. Mm -hmm. He didn't send Jesus just to be a spectacle. Mm -hmm. That's right. He didn't see, send Jesus just so people could look at him. The objective was to hear him. See, to, that's what Jesus, when Jesus was uh, confessed by God on the Mount of Transfiguration, he said, this is my beloved sin in whom I am well pleased. Hear him! He didn't say, see him! See, that's not what he said. Hear him! Listen to him! Hear him means listen to him. To what he has to say. Then they ask his, they ask his parents, he said, uh, is this your son, who ye say was born blind? How does he now see? How can this be? How can he be born blind and all of a sudden see? <laughs> well, his parents answered and said, we know this is our son. We, we, we know. And we know that he was born blind. We know that too. But, and they fudged a little bit. He said, but, but what means he now seeth, we know not. Well, this may not have been really technically the case, but this is what they said. We know not, or who has opened his eyes, we know not, we don't know, but he, he's of age. He should ask him, he'll speak for himself. Now the, <laughs> the Holy Spirit explains why they talk this way. You see, some people, they kind of hedge in their answers, they, they don't really tell the whole truth. And, and here's what the Spirit says. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. Mm -hmm. yes. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, would confess that Jesus was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Mm -hmm. That'll do it. You know how important the synagogue is. Sometimes your job depends on whether you go to the synagogue. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. 
Sometimes whether you get uh, whether you're in need and um, visited at the hospital depends on whether you the synagogues. It's being part of the synagogue it's a big thing. Yes. With some people. Mm -hmm. And so they they are they are afraid to say, therefore his parents said he's of age as Kim. They didn't they didn't say this because they didn't know what happened or they didn't know who did it. They didn't say it because they were afraid to say it. Yes. For fear they'd be excommunicated from the synagogue. Well, there's another occasion where a group of Pharisees believed on Christ. But the scripture says they didn't they didn't confess him. Mm -hmm. Some of the Jews did, believed on Christ. They didn't confess him because the scripture says they they knew they'd be put out of the synagogue. And then the Holy Spirit adds this word. He said uh, for they love the praises of men more than the praises of God. Yes. And so there's an interpretation. Mm -hmm. So technically you could say, well these poor parents, they just didn't want to be put out of the synagogue. But see the truth of the matter was, they had rather be spoken well of by men than by God. And you may rest assured, God does not speak well of a person who does not listen to and honor his son. Amen. God will not speak well of such a person. Right. We may speak well. Other men may speak well. They may say, well, they're a good good church member. They've come a long way. Fair faithful givers. They're always there when we need them. See, the critical matter is what think you of Christ, whose son is he? And if you don't think a lot of Christ, God doesn't think a lot of you. It doesn't make what give any difference what kind of theology says, well, he just loves you anyway. This is just a lot of hokum. This isn't the way it is at all. God honors him that honors his son, and he's going to condemn those who don't. It's just Amen. that straight, uh -huh. just that straightforward. So these parents, for whatever may be said of them, they had more respect for the rulers of the synagogue than they did for the Lord Jesus Christ, even though it was their son that had been healed. So see, that's how close it can get. Even though it was their son that had been healed. Well, we're going to have to have another interrogation here. This isn't sufficient. You remember, uh, incidentally, Solomon said, this, the fear of man brings a snare. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, I, I tell you, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more they can do. Yeah. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Uh -huh. I say unto you, fear him. Amen. So Jesus speaks very candidly about it. So if, you're, if you uh, have this propensity to be afraid of what men will think, you, you best get rid of that propensity. So then it will condemn you if you don't. Yeah. Yes. It, it, it lead, that's a broad road that leads to destruction. Uh -huh. You have a deep, and this is a natch, this is part of flesh. Flesh wants to be received by its peers. It does. But there comes a time when this has got to go because uh, your peers in God aren't on the same wavelength at all. Amen. Now a second interrogation props up. And this is in the 24th through the 34th verse, kind of extensive one. Then call they again the man that was blind. So they've already talked to the man that's blind. They talk to his parents, and now they go back to the man who's blind, and uh, they speak with him again. They said uh, unto him, "Give God the praise." So they're kind of admitting that this he can see all right. <laughs> Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. We, well, you probably heard people say that, as we all know. Mm -hmm. You probably heard people say, introduce things like that, as we all know. Well. Was Jesus a sinner? They no. said they knew he was a sinner. Well, they, well, they didn't know that at all. This wasn't the case at all. <clears throat> Give God praise. Do it. Come on now. Join in with the choruses. <laughs> Join in. Let's give him some praise. I'm not sure what they meant when they said give him praise. But it wasn't what God meant. Because God's given praise in the Son. Yeah. See, so here was, the, here was the vehicle for praising God. Uh -huh. Right, right uh -huh. before them, this man's testifying of him, and they want to ignore Jesus uh -huh. and give God praise. Uh -huh. Well, the blind man, <laughs> he, I glorified his naivety. <laughs> he answered, he said, 
He said, I, whether he's a sinner or no, I don't, I don't know. He didn't know who it is, see. He just knows there's a man named Jesus, and there probably was a lot of other people named Jesus. In the Bible, it was Jesus, his surname is Justice. See, there's, it was a common name. And uh, he said, I, I don't know whether he is or not. Oh, this one thing I do know, though, I do know this. Whereas I was blind, now I see. So always make a big thing out of what God's done in you. Amen. Make a big thing out of that. It, maybe you can't explain the theological implications of it all. Maybe you can't blend it in with the official dogma of the church. But make a big thing out of what you do know he's done. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm not the same. Mm -hmm. I really don't want to sit anymore. Mm -hmm. I really do hate iniquity. I really love righteousness. I really am seeking the kingdom of God. Just make a big thing out of what God's done and God will come, yes. come to your aid. See it. Spiritual Babylon will try and get you the glory in the wrong thing. That's right. They'll try and get you the glory of where you belong, how long you belong, what the official name is that you belong to, what kind of conventions you have where you belong to. See, they just glory in what he's done. That's really all you can give thanks for anyway. Yes. You can really just give thanks for what you've what you've experienced mm -hmm. from the Lord. So that was his uh, that was his answer. But it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't sufficient. Then said they unto him, What did he to thee? Now they asked him this already. What did he to thee? How did he open your eyes? Come on, let's, there's got to be something else here. Well, see, you can't, you can't embellish the truth. See, there, see there, in, there are circles where people can embellish. You can kind of add some bells and whistles to what happened. Kind of yeah. color it up a little bit so it sounds, sounds more impressive. But this man, he won't, he won't do that. He answered, I've told you already. Yet you'll not hear. Then, oh, the coup de grace. Will you, will you hear it again? You want me to say it again? Then he said, will you also be his disciples? Oh, so they find out that this, this fellow's become a disciple. Will you also be his disciples? So he's become a disciple. Mm -hmm. He knew anyone could do this for me. I'm following. I'm going to follow him. See, but, see, some people never made this connection. They really haven't. Jesus has forgiven their sins, they say, but they haven't like made the connection. They ought to follow him because of it. Uh -huh. Or they maybe maybe they did pray and their prayer was answered and some thing was resolved, but they haven't connected to follow him. They haven't become a disciple. See, mm -hmm. so he was a disciple. He wanted to know if they wanted to be a disciple, and this <laughs> this did it. They reviled him, saying, "Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses." We belong to the one true church. We're Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. Well, how did they know? Were they there? Oh, no. Well, they heard it by testimony. That's exactly what they're getting here. They're getting a testimony. So they chose to believe what was said about Moses, but not to believe what's said about Jesus. That's right. So they weren't being honest in this matter. They were they were saying, we don't need any more evidence in a word about Moses, but we got to have a lot more evidence about this word here at all. They didn't need any more. This this testimony of this man is going to condemn them in the last day. Yes, amen. He gave them a witness. As for this fellow, how would you like to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and be said, now I have I recall that you referred to my son as this fellow. Hmm. Or maybe maybe you've graduated up a little further and said, this is my friend. Hmm. Now, Abraham was a friend of God, but God wasn't a friend. Abraham didn't look at God as his friend. Hmm. Jesus said, you're my friends. But they didn't say, Jesus is our friend. Yeah, that's a little bit too low for a Savior like Jesus. That's a little bit too low. We know not from whence he is. As though that meant anything. <laughs> now he answers with a holy sarcasm. Verse 30, he says, the man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing. You know not from whence he is. Like, you are the doctors of the law. Huh? You know all about the prophets and Moses. You're Moses' disciple and Moses prophesied to this man. Moses said God's going to raise up a prophet. To him shall the people hearken. Huh? 
And here you are. You're the Bible experts, and you don't. This is a marvelous thing. Can you see? It was, it was like a spiritual yeah. stab yeah. at these people. Yet he's opened my eyes. How can it be? One time Jesus said, Is it possible for a prophet to perish outside of Jerusalem? And what he was saying was, The prophet comes here and he gets killed. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what happened here. The witness was given to them. Now, this blind man, you'll find out he has some pretty good kingdom sense. Yeah. So he's going to reason. They, they reasoned with him. Mm -hmm. They said, We know this man's a sinner. They didn't say how they knew this, other than he broke the Sabbath day. And he reasoned with them. He said, Now, we know that God heareth not sinners. Well, some people still don't know that. This man knew this. We know that. God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. That's kind of an astounding piece of information. Mm -hmm. And yet this man knew this. Now how long he knew this? I don't know how long he knew this, but he knew this. He was able to reason this out. Mm -hmm. this, couldn't, this could not possibly have been done by a person that was transgressing the law of God. Mm -hmm. God would not allow something like this to happen by means of a person who was living in violation mm -hmm. of what God said. So what marvelous bit of reasoning this is. <laughs> and he adds this little bit of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of the man born blind? Yeah. But this is never, there's no precedent here. This has never happened before. If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. Mm -hmm. See, he's been, I've received a lot of testimony here. They've got a first-hand testimony of what he did. It's a man named Jesus. He anointed my eyes. He told me to wash. I came and seen. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, he's a prophet. Mm -hmm. Man couldn't do this. Uh, if he wasn't, a, wasn't of God, God doesn't work through sinners like this. And uh, if he were not of God, he couldn't do anything. It's quite a... Quite a remarkable bit of reasoning. So it was somewhat, it's somewhat—it's an example of giving a reason for the hopes that's within you. Mm -hmm. It's just that I felt like and I was happy and so forth. It's not like that. This is like holy reasoning. You've got mm -hmm. to see this. And he thinks this thing out and reasons quite extensively with them. But flesh, he can't receive the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness to the natural man. And the flesh is enmity against God. For it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And so they uh, they answered him, Thou wast altogether born in sins. And dost thou teach us? <laughs> you haven't even been to Bible college. That's right. <laughs> How could this be that you know all you will know all these things? They didn't make any effort to answer this man. That's right. Yeah. He was stopping their mouths. Uh -huh. But this is what Amen. flesh does, and flesh can't contend with what you say and leaps on you, see? That's why people attack you. This is why, because they can't contend with what you're saying. They did this with Stephen. They couldn't resist the wisdom, so they just bit him with their teeth and stoned him to death. That's, that's what flesh does. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So when you give an answer for the hope that's in you, don't think everyone's going to say, well, thank you. We're very <laughs> glad that you told us all this. You don't think that that's going to happen. Yes. Yes. They may they may do like these people. Say, well, you... Yes. Who are you? Who are you? You were raised a Pentecostal. How could you possibly know all this? Marvelous that they didn't know it. And then the scripture makes this cryptic remark, verse 34, and they cast him out. Why? Because he could see. And they didn't like his explanation. If he could have just said, well... Now, the reason I can see is that last week's quarterly, I took it home and studied it, and that's, and it, this heating came on me while I was studying the quarterly. They could have accepted that. Yeah. That, that would have been quite all right. Mm -hmm. Whatever would have happened on Monday. We, we, we don't want anything happening when we're in church. We don't mind testimonies you know about out of church. We don't want anything in church. That's how, this is how flesh is. Some of us have experienced, experienced this kind of thing. Yeah. They cast him out. Well, it was a day of, a day of blessing for him. Because flesh has no interest in truth. 
Mm -hmm. yes. That's, but this isn't the end of the story. Uh -huh. Jesus is not only the author of the salvation, he's the finisher of it too. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. He's the only beginning, he's the ending. He's not only the first, he's the last. Mm -hmm. Not only the Alpha, he's the Omega. Mm -hmm. This isn't done yet. This case isn't over yet. Mm -hmm. God has just given an opportunity for a lot of people to benefit from this case. Mm -hmm. He's let the testimony be made known abroad so more could be brought in, but they rejected it. And Jesus heard, they heard, he heard that they cast him out. That's John 9, 35. Jesus heard that they cast him out. See, I can, I can kind of identify with this man. I can remember when I was cast out. I can remember how I felt when I was cast out. I wasn't as advanced as this man was back then. I didn't know Jesus was going to find me again <coughs> after I was cast out. He's going, to find, he's going to find him again after he was cast out. So Jesus heard he was cast out and when he had found him. Mm -hmm. hmm? See, you will never experience that until you cut the ties with something Jesus is an end. Amen. Uh -huh. You'll not get this second finding, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. And he found him. This time the man could see him. Uh, I wasn't blind now. He could see him. Jesus said to them, Do you believe on the Son of God? <laughs> the blind man. The blind man says to him, Well, who is he? <laughs> who is he, Lord? Who is he? What? Lord? Lord? Who is he, Lord? See, he knew that this, this, this man he's talking to is connected with God in some way. Because he couldn't do this otherwise. Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on? If I just, if I just knew who he was, I, I'd trust him. Mm -hmm. If I just knew, just knew who he was, uh -huh. who he was, Jesus said, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that is talking with thee. <laughs> <laughs> you thought Jesus would have said, I'm he! But he appeals to the man's experience. Yes. Look, you're looking at him. You're looking at him right now. You're looking at him. The one you're talking to, he's the son of God. Just that quick, he said, Lord, I believe! <laughs> oh. And he worshipped him. Yeah. yeah, those two go together. Uh -huh. Those two go together. It's possible to not think of Jesus as God's son. Yeah. It's possible to think of Jesus as the person who anointed your eyes. Told you to wash and you came seen. But you really don't connect them with being the son of God. Here's what I'm going to tell you. You can't believe on Jesus until you see him as the son of God. Mm -hmm. That's when faith comes. Amen. And, will. and as soon as this happened, he said, I believe. Before, he didn't say, I believe. He just said, well, I know he's not a sinner. I know he's from God. I know he's a prophet. But see, you've got to know more to believe. Uh -huh. Believing isn't believing this point, that point. Believing this and that about Jesus. Uh -huh. Believing he could help you. He loves you. He wants to help you. See, those are these are all true, but that's not faith. That's not what believing is about. Yeah, yeah. Believing is about Son of God. That's yeah. what believing is <laughs> Remember that the eunuch, he'd been studying the Bible, just went to Jerusalem to worship. And he's coming back from worship, reading the Bible, and he doesn't have the foggiest idea what the Bible means, and he's on the way home from worship. He doesn't know. And you remember Philip he had to jog along by the side of the chariot while he was reading and call up in the chariot and say, Do you understand what you're reading? He says, <laughs> I can't, he said, uh, unless someone explains it to me. He got up in the chariot and he started started that scripture and he preached unto him Jesus. Now, you know Jesus where you can start wherever wherever someone's reading in the Bible. Mm -hmm. At some point, you got to get to where you can do this. If you're going to be a, a teacher, a leader, mm -hmm. 
You got to get to the point where you can start with the people we're at, take them to Jesus. From, yeah. from that text of scripture, mm -hmm. it may be Genesis one one. In the beginning, God did, but you got to be able to work your way to Jesus because that really is what all scripture ends up with Jesus. Yes. The mm -hmm. testimony of Jesus, Revelation nineteen ten. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. So every text eventually ends up with Jesus. Yeah. And you remember the eunuch riding this chair in the desert, in the desert, and he spots this body of water. Yeah. He says, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, well, if you believe, you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you know what Philip was preaching by what this eunuch said he believed. Mm -hmm. Some people preaching, you just said, if you believe, you're man. And the person would say, all right, I believe I can have the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. That's what, this is what some people preach. Yeah. Okay. This is the, what he said. Some other people say, I believe that, that this is the one true church. I believe that, that this movement is the, is the holy movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Stop the chariot. Right. That's yeah. why, because that's the pin. That's the pivot on which everything turns. Yes, amen. It's not Jesus' connection with you that changes the tide. It's your perception of Jesus' connection with God that turns the tide. Yeah. God honors Jesus, and he's, he'll honor you if you honor the Son. Yes, but yeah. that's where everything hinges. Yes, amen. And uh, this former blind man mm -hmm. got the picture, and he believed. Mm -hmm. He believed. The Scripture tells us, See, he believed he wasn't only a prophet, he wasn't only a healer, he was the Son of God. Yeah. Jesus said you had to believe that. Remember Jesus said to his disciples one time in Caesarea Philippi, he said, what do the people have to say about me? Who do they say that I, the Son of Man, am? Mm -hmm. Well, he said, some people think you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead. Some people think you're Jeremiah or, or Elijah or one of the prophets. He said, ah, but who do you say I am? Who do you say that I am? In a flash mm -hmm. of a spiritual insight, God opened it up to Peter. Yes. And he saw it. He said, Thou art the Christ. That says, You're the one. Mm -hmm. You're the person God's hanging everything on. Mm -hmm. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, You didn't learn this in school. Mm -hmm. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. Well, he revealed it to this blind man, too. Amen. He showed him, too. This is the Son of the Living God. <laughs> See, the victory is believing that Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Now, it actually is pretty straightforward. John puts it this way, 1 John 5, 4 and 5. He says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Now, but he knows that flesh can't, can't really, he'll try and abuse it. He says, who is he that overcomes the world? Who is it? But he that believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. All right. Mm -hmm. Now this is true that the one who overcomes the world is the one that believes Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Then you've got to conclude that the person who doesn't overcome the world doesn't believe yes. that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. This is not a creedal belief. Mm -hmm. It's not like a sign that I believe this statement. All right. No, believe Jesus is the Son of God means you've seen it. Yes. You're persuaded of it, that of all the people that have ever come to this world and walked in this world, this is the lone person yeah. that God honors, yes, amen. his own son. And when you see this, mm -hmm. the windows of heaven open up, yes. amen. and you'll be blessed. Christ's relation to God is the critical one. Well, Jesus doesn't let the matter go mm -hmm. here either. <clears throat> he turns his attention to these Pharisees. <laughs> Jesus said, for judgment, I'm coming to the world. This is verse 39. That they would see, that they would see not, might see, and that they would see, might be made blind. Mm -hmm. That's quite a statement. Yeah. In other words, I'm, I'm kind of reversing the, reversing the diagnosis. I'm coming to show that the people who think they know it don't know it, and the people who really don't know it and know they don't know it, I've come so they can know it. Yeah. See, that's uh -huh. what he said. Well, after he said that, this is one, one of the reasons why I came in the world, for judgment. Mm -hmm. Not 
go to hell judgment. That's, he, he said, I didn't come into the world to judge the world. And he is going to judge the world, but that's not why he came in uh -huh. the first time. Yeah. Uh, I've come here to distinguish who has it and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. This is why it's important for, G, for people in an assembly, such, such as this assembly, to be conscious of the presence of Christ. Uh -huh. Because it, he'll distinguish who's got a hold of the things and who doesn't. Because we, we don't have this kind of discernment. Some people may think they can do this, but see this, but Jesus can. Yeah. And well, they, these men kind of picked up on this, and they said, they heard these words. They said, "Are we blind also?" I could just, I could just see it. Are we blind also? I mean, you obviously haven't seen my credentials. You obviously haven't read my resume, huh? You don't realize we are the rulers of the synagogue, huh? Jesus said, if you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. What, what, what did he mean when he said this? <laughs> A person who thinks they know who Jesus is, uh -huh. but don't really receive him as he is, uh -huh. they're blind. Amen. It doesn't make any difference what they say. Uh -huh what the confession they give. See, this blind man, he was blind and he knew he was blind. Mm -hmm. There's no question about this. And so Jesus gave him his sight. These other religious leaders, they thought they could see, but Jesus' presence brought out they couldn't. Now, you've, you've no doubt experienced this, that you've, there's a religious leaders, maybe it's a preacher, maybe it's an elder, maybe it's a Bible college professor, or whatever. And it's, you, you're pretty sure that they kind of know the things of God. But you begin to talk about the things of God and you sense that they're kind of, they don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. What's happened? It, it's been show, shown to you that yeah. they're blind. Yeah. That's, that's what's happened. Don't seem like a very devout, very devout person. But as soon as you begin talking about these things of God and what Jesus did, and he anointed my eyes and I washed the poodle say hello and I came in and he's a prophet and so they, all of a sudden, you, you've lost them. They're not interested in this at all. They're blind. Yeah. That's what the trouble is. They're blind. But only Jesus' presence brings this out. You can talk about the moral values. Mm -hmm. huh? You can talk about family values. Yeah. Yeah. You can talk about Christian government. Mm -hmm. There's a whole host of things you can talk about that will not really make clear who's in and who's out. Amen. Right. But when it comes down to the Son of God... Mm -hmm. He says, I'm come. This is why I come. Yeah. I'm the real article. Mm -hmm. I'm the bread that came down from heaven. I'm the son God sent into the world. And I, my presence uncovers who mm -hmm. can see and who, who can't. And those who can't see and admit it, I'll give them, I'll give them sight. And uh, <coughs> Jesus said, well, when you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. Is that, that's kind of intriguing to say, but your sin remains. It's a sin I won't take away. Think of that. I won't take it away. See, if you don't acknowledge me, it won't be taken away. Well, to me, this is sort of, this is uh, an account in Scripture that's filled with many wonderful things. It tells us that it's possible to be found by Christ when you're actually not even looking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you've got this, at least you know you're blind, at least you're begging, you know, you, you know your condition, but you've never really connected it with mm -hmm. Christ. But see, Christ can find you. You learn that Christ can find you the second time. Mm -hmm. It is possible to be advantaged by Jesus and mm -hmm. not know who, that he's the one that did it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you think the church did it. Yeah. Huh? Maybe you think you did it. Maybe you think there's some medicinal value in the clay or some miraculous power in the water. See, maybe you think you were baptized and it was the water that did it. That's what did it. See? Well, did you think the water of Siloam did this? We had a rush of blindfold with them going to the pool of Siloam. See, it's, Jesus is the one that affects the change, but it has to be 
seen. And you learn also that the work of Jesus is very disconcerting to people who are out of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They're like intimidated by the presence of a person who God has really done something in. They know God's done something in. And it, something's, but it intimidates mm -hmm. flesh. And so they'll ask, who was it? When did it happen? How did it happen? They ask stuff like this. And you can tell them, but they won't, they don't mm -hmm. receive, won't receive it. Mm -hmm. And the last word to the critics of these blind men was not delivered by the former blind man. The last word was delivered by Jesus yeah. to these people. And uh, it, it's going to be so with your critics too. So if you want the last word, Jesus is going to have that yeah. last word.